Hey, so I recently saw a very interesting Reddit post and thought that it would be perfect for me to make a video on. If you've seen any of my boss strategy videos, then I think it's obvious that I am very interested in kind of demystifying aspects of this game by sharing simple but effective methods. And so with that, here are 10 of the most useful and powerful two to three slot simple spell combos or wand builds. First, we're all going to have to agree that the Greek letter spells are insanely powerful and I don't have to talk about them much in this video. They allow infinite healing, infinite black holes, infinite wand summoning, infinite anything. If you're newer to the game and you don't use these much or you just don't have them unlocked, I highly recommend you do so as soon as possible. Which brings us to number one, Ping Pong Lumi, the classic long range death laser. This is one of the most popular combinations in the game for a reason. Not only is it very effective at killing things, most things, but you can dig with it as well. It does use a large amount of mana to maintain, but even in short bursts, it is still highly effective. This combination is so simple and so effective that some people actually refrain from using it because it's just too powerful. But if you have a ping pong path and you have a luminous drill, this will get you through many of the situations in which you find yourself in in the game. Up next, we have one of my personal favorite forms of movement throughout the entire game. Long Distance Cast, Small Teleport Bolt. You can use Normal Teleport Bolt, but Small Teleport Bolt is a lot faster because it has a much shorter lifetime. If you have very limited or no forms of digging, then this combination will help you to very quickly move throughout the world. You still have to be careful, of course, but you can use this in order to avoid most confrontations. However, I am headed to a major confrontation in order to showcase the next wand build. Bruh. Piercing Shot Prickly Spore Pod. Very deadly. The spore pods themselves do a lot of damage when they explode, and piercing actually causes them to multiply themselves as they come into contact with enemies, quickly producing an insane amount of exploding spory goodness. And if you go three slot and you add homing to this, then it just gets that much more insane because the homing modifier actually ensures that the spore pod continuously maintains contact with an enemy, producing even vaster amounts of explodey spores. On the subject of homing, let's talk about a few different homing builds, beginning with homing unstable crystals. Because if there's anything better than extremely damaging mines that trick kill enemies giving you double gold, it's homing extremely damaging mines that trick kill enemies and give you double gold. And now it's time for homing plasma. A lot of people avoid using plasma because it can be very deadly to yourself. However, it is also extremely deadly to almost everything else in the game, including bosses. So as long as you're careful, you can use this to just dominate most of the game. Forms of plasma, including plasma cutter, my favorite, can be found really early on. Of course, the normal homing modifier is somewhat rare, but short range homing is not too uncommon to find even early in the game. And now, of course, we get to homing rocks, which is just as good with short range homing as it is with normal homing. And I could think of no better place to showcase this than inside Heasy Base, where these rocks can just run amok, murdering everything up and down the halls of the Heasy's underground stronghold. Of course, each rock spell only has three casts unless you have the unlimited spells perk. However, you can simply just kick your rocks around in order to move them along with you in order to continue the chaos. Now we have a powerful form of infinite digging in only two slots. Matter Eater is a spell that some people ignore because of its limited uses and limited synergy with a lot of spells, limiting its usefulness. But when using it to modify long distance cast, which, surprise surprise, counts as a projectile, its limited 10 uses never diminish, allowing us a pretty useful way to dig through the entire game except for Cursed Rock, of course, for free. 
So yeah, because Matter Eater cannot dig through Cursed Rock, you can't use this to dig into the tower or into parallel worlds or to take a shortcut into the wizard's den, but anywhere else is fair game. Personally, I really like this form of digging. And these two spells are pretty commonly found. So until you have a lot or infinite black holes, this is a pretty handy way for getting around the world and back up through the levels. The next build uses only three spells, Square Barrier, Spells to Power, and a Humble Spark Bolt to do a tremendous amount of damage in only two clicks. One and two. Okay, three and four. But hey, he's dead. We can test the damage on a Holy Mountain statue in order to get 11,954. Booyah. Just try not to forget that the barrier spell from which spells to power is drawing all its power from does very fast self-damage. You can use the horizontal and vertical variants of the barrier spell, but you're going to want to use a long distance cast so you don't cast it right on top of yourself. Next, we have another classic, Freeze Charge Summon Tentacle, which, as you're about to see, can one-shot even later game enemies, as long as they're not immune to melee damage or freezing. Tentacles might have a low range and might be a little bit difficult to aim, but they make up for that in their destructive power. And besides, if you're willing to use more wand slots, you can increase their range with things like light shot. There's not much more to be said about this one other than it's just a good old fashioned wombo combo. Now go out there and get your revenge. And finally, the Lightning Bolt spell is an extremely effective spell throughout a good chunk of the game, in the main loop anyway, that can be made much more effective by increasing its range. One of my favorite ways to do that is by using the Orbiting Arc modifier. Other than adding a little bit more damage, it also extends the effective range entirely past the border of the screen, meaning that now in Snowy Depths, you can do the sniping. An added bonus is that if the end of the bolt doesn't strike a viable target, then the explosive blast is actually delayed, which can be very useful. Anyway guys, those are 10 of the very best low slot spell combos. There are doubtless more of these, I can think of a few more right now, but if you have a favorite that I did not show in this video, let me know down below, and maybe I'll make a part two. Alright. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day, guys. Have fun and happy noiting.